Have you ever come across a layer cake that you loved so you bought it but then the more you looked at it the more you realized it was way too pretty and you didn't want to cut it up so i came up with this design but i have to warn you this tutorial comes with some maybe some unconventional methods and so please don't send me mail about the methods i use in this instead just try it out i did come up with an alternative for people who don't like the unconventional method. So this is the tutorial. Here we go. For this project, I'm going to use one layer cake. This is a Jordan Fabrics uh, Mats hand cut. The name of the line is Zen and there's 40 pieces. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose this layer cake is because it's beautiful. And you know, sometimes you get these layer cakes that are so pretty that you do not want to cut them up. So this one fits that bill. These prints are so beautiful and they almost look like kind of watercolory and they're super pretty. And so I decided that I love this one with the kind of kaleidoscope print on it. Got hummingbirds and just it's so beautiful and you know sometimes you do get these layer cakes that are too pretty to cut up so that's why i chose this my accent fabric will be two charm packs this is called illustrations by ally k designs and it's all in blacks and whites and there are some grays in here too and i just think this is going to be a lovely accent for these and it's just super pretty. So I got two charm packs. Uh, there's 42 in each of these charm packs. So I will have four of them left over. And then this, this layer cake has 40 pieces. So I'm going to separate these out. Another reason I chose this layer cake is because it's two of every print. So I'm going to separate these prints. I'm going to use 20 layer cake, uh, 20 10 inch squares for the body of the quilt. And then I will need four of these charm packs for each 10 inch square. So let me separate these out and then we will get started. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is with my charm packs, I'm going to cut them down to four and a half inches because five inches is too big for this project. So I'm just gonna grab uh, a couple and use my square and I'm going to cut them down to four and a half inches instead of putting my four and a half inch line along the corner I like to center my four and a half somewhere within the block so that I know that I will have a true four and a half and also because it gets rid of those pinked edges which I'm not a huge fan of so I like to work without pinked edges, which is another reason I like Matt's hand cuts because he does not pink the edges on his. They're a nice straight edge and they're so accurate. But this did not come like that. So I'm cutting these down to four and a half inches. So I'm gonna do that to all of my charm squares and I'm gonna set those aside. All right, so to make this block, here's what you're gonna do. You're going to take one of your layer case squares, your 10 inch squares, and then you will choose four different charm squares. And I like to vary them up between the grays and the blacks. Just make them four different ones. And then you're going to, you can do this one of two ways. You're going to put, you're gonna snowball one of these squares to each of the corners and some people like to draw a line on the back right down the middle like this with a light pencil or a pen just enough so you can see it and then you will snowball it here i have diagonal seam tape on my machine so that makes it easier for me and you're just going to snowball all four corners like this so let me go do that real quick once you snowball them don't cut them yet we're going to do something else to them 
before we cut. Okay, so I've sewn all of mine down. As you can see, if I were to pull this back, you can see where that would make a little half square triangle right there, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is right now. And you can do this one of two ways. Now you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure about a half of an inch away from that seam that you just sewn and you're going to draw another line right down there like that if you can see there's my seam line and then there's the line that i drew and you're just going to sew right along that not that line now you can either do it that way or I'm gonna use the left side of my presser foot and sew, and use that as a guide for this seam. And that will put me a little less than a half of an inch away, but it's it just takes that step out of drawing this line a little easier. Let me show you. All right, so I've got this seam line here that I've sewn and I'm just gonna line that right up along the left side of my presser foot and I'm gonna sew another line right down there so now I've got two lines sewn right on there now this my presser foot it's a lot less than a half of an inch. I would say it's about another quarter inch. And so I'm okay with having smaller seam allowances. But if it, if it feels better to have that quarter inch seam allowance, go ahead and measure a half of an inch away. And then when you sew that line, you can cut in the middle and you will have your your block will look slightly different than mine but it will still have the same effect so i'm just going to go ahead and use my presser foot as a guide for sewing that second line on all four sides Just like that. Okay, so now I've got my two lines across each charm square. And now I'm just gonna cut right in between those two lines I've sewn. And again, as I mentioned, since I've used my presser foot, which is less than a half of an inch, my seam allowances are going to be smaller, but they're not so small that my fabric is gonna pull or rip. So I'm just gonna go around the circle and cut. You can use your rotary cutter if it's more comfortable. I like using my scissors just because I feel like I have a little more control over my cuts. And I'm just gonna go around and cut in between those two stitching lines. And when I'm all done, I will end up with four half square triangles. And so let me get this last one cut and then I'll show you what we are going to do next. Now these half square triangles, the next step is to just press them open. I like to press them to the charm square. So let me get those pressed real quick. And once you get those pressed, you'll also wanna press back your square here, press and sew that will also be pressed so you will still have a square when you're all done. So now what I've got, I've got my 10 inch square that has four corners that are snowballed and now I have four half square triangles that are pressed. So the next step is to take your half square triangles, I'll use this one for an example, and now we're going to snowball the corners again with this but we're going to use our half square triangles as our snowball so when you and i'm going to match the same pattern to the same one so this one will go with this one etc 
And when I snowball these corners on now, I'm going to make it so that the opposite print is right sides together. So I don't want to put the same print right sides together. I want to turn it so the opposite is right sides together. And I'm just going to snowball that just like this. And again, you can either use your ruler to measure a half of an inch away from your seam line, draw that line right on there like that, and then sew along that line. Or you can do what I'm going to do again, is to use my presser foot as the guide, the left side of my presser foot as the guide to sew that right on. So let me get all of these attached and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so here we go. I've sewn all of these on and I matched up the layer cake with the charm square opposite colors together and I've sewn all of those on. We're not going to stop there. We're going to do the same thing we did before and we're going to go around and we're going to sew yet another seam either a half of an inch away or a presser foot away and I'm going to go around. So when we're all said and done, we will have three stitching lines to look at. So let me go sew it all around one more time. All right, so that is done. Now, if you notice, I've got three stitching lines on each corner there that you can see. So there's the original one and then the two that I've just added. On each one, there's three stitching lines. So I'm going to cut now in between the last two stitching lines that I did. So let me get those cut just like that. Again, I'm using my scissors. If you are more comfortable using your rotary cutter, you can do that. But I am, I feel better using my scissors for this. It just gives me more control in my head anyway. And just cutting in the middle, right between those two stitching lines. And one more. So when this is all done, you will have, again, four more half square triangles, but they will be smaller. So we're going to press those open. And then when you open this, you will end up with a block that kind of looks a little wonky like this, but it will have these extra lines in here. So let me press everything open and then I'll show you what it looks like. So after doing that, here's what you will end up with. Again, you will have your four half square triangles that were smaller than the originals, and then you'll have a piece that looks like this. Now, when you're pressing this one, um, press this way and this way. So press with the grain, try not to press diagonally because you'll end up with some puckers in the middle like this. So really try to press it as much as you can and as straight as you can. I might take this one back and press it again so these four half square triangles we're going to put aside for now because we will use those later on in the quilt so i've got a pile of these half square triangles from that i've made so far and again like i said we're going to use these later on in the quilt so those are in a pile and this one now we're going to square it up and it should still be really really close to 10 inches because we haven't changed the size of this, it might be nine and three quarters inches, and that's okay. I'm going to square mine up, and to do that, we're going to use these sides, which we already know are straight. We're gonna use the, those to square this up. So I'm just going to do it side by side. I'm going to put a line along that straight edge of the top, and I'm gonna line it up with a, the straight edge of the side like this, and I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and trim these sides off just like that. And I'm gonna give it a, a quarter turn, lining it up with a line on my, on my cutting board maybe, whatever is comfortable for you. Again, lining up this top edge, which we know is square, and then along the side here, and I'm gonna give that, a cut and just two more times just keep rotating it a quarter turn and lining it up 
and you will end up with a square block. And I'll give it one more. I think you're getting the idea. And one more cut. And there we go. So there is our block, our main block that we're going to use for this quilt. So get all of these done. Do it with half, half of your layer cake. And we're going to save the other half of the layer cake for our sashing. And these little guys will be our cornerstones. So get all these sewn up and then we'll go to the next step. Now with the rest of the layer cake, remember we divided them in half, so we still have 20 left over. We are going to cut the rest of these into two and a half inch strips. And that is both going to be for our sashing and then hopefully we will have enough for a binding as well. So let's cut these into two and a half inch strips. And I've got about four, I think, or five of these stacked up together because I'm, I feel comfortable cutting that many at once. And so I'm just going to just cut all of them into two and a half inch strips again, which will be for both my sashing and my binding. Now, after I've got these cut, um, you'll remember the leftover half square triangles that we had. Okay, those are done. Now these leftover half square triangles that we had from our, from our block, we're going to turn these into hourglass blocks. So you started with 80 of these that are left over and when you sew, when you pair them up and sew them together to make hourglass blocks, you will end up with 40, which you only will need 30 for your sashing if you do sashing all around the edges and in between all the blocks. So as, as they stand right now, they are around, I'd say they're around three inches, give or take. And so if I cut these into, or if I sew these into hourglass blocks, then I'm going to square them up to two and a half inches. So all I have to do is put them together with the seams going in opposite directions so that they will nest. And then I'll just put those seams together like this, just like this, and then make sure they're all nested nice and good. And then I'm going to either draw a line down the middle of this, just like so with a light pencil or whatever you have. And then we're going to sew right on that line. So I'm just going to chain piece these and then I will also cut. And then after I chain piece them, I'll cut about a quarter inch away from that line. So let me show you what that's gonna look like. So as you can see, I've sewn a, a line just right down the middle of that after I put them together. Now I'm going to cut about a quarter inch away and you can use your rotary cutter for this if you want. For me, it's just as easy. And then I'll press it back. And now I've got a little hourglass block and now I'm gonna square that up to two and a half inches I'm just going to use my 45 degree line on there, making sure I'm within the two and a half inches there. And I'm just going to slice it up two edges at a time, turn it over and do the same thing. Now I can use my two and a half inch line on the sides, keeping my 45 degree line right on that seam and cut that straight across so now I've got a little a little hourglass and that is going to be my cornerstones to go along with the sashing excuse me my dog just hit my camera that'll go along with the sashing so let's get all this put together and see how it looks so here I've got everything sewn together when I made the sashings and the cornerstones, I put them together in rows. 
So I, I put them up here in rows. I sewed them together all in rows. And then make sure that when you sew everything together, uh, when you make your rows, press your seams toward the sashing. So in the little skinny rows of sashing, I pressed the seams away from the cornerstones and toward the sashing. And then when you do your bigger rows, press your seams toward the sashing. That way when you sew your rows together, all of your seams will nest just the way that they are supposed to. Make sure you get your quilty t-shirts too, by the way. This one I love. It's one of my favorite new shirts. I just got it. So make sure you get your shirts. They're actually on sale right now as we speak. There's a link in the description. This quilt here measures about 59 by 48. This quilt also hasn't quite decided if it wants additional borders or not. So I'm going to stare at it for a while and let it speak to me. And then I will decide or I will let the quilt decide whether it gets borders or not. So I love this. I love how the colors go together. I love how it shows off the original layer cake because I sure it was just one of those ones that was just too pretty to cut. Very, very pretty. Make sure you join the Revelation Quilt Guild, which is on Facebook. There's also a link to that in the description. We'd love to see all of the things you make. And then you can join our monthly challenges. Right now the challenge is green and it's about to wrap up. So I'm really excited to see all of the projects. And some people have, have submitted some amazing, amazing projects. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you again for everybody for watching. And thank you. A special thanks goes to my members. So get out those layer cakes that are too pretty to cut up and you can show them off with this great quilt.